hey guys welcome back to simtech channel now imagine this the grid goes down and but your solar panels keep pushing power into the line now the lines man who's basically working on the line is going to be thinking that the line is dead while in actuality it's still live now that's a disaster waiting to happen and this is called eye landing so in power system we got what is known as anti-islanding protection now these systems is basically a way for your grid here to shout hey stop you need to disconnect now so in short islanding is what happened when this section here a dg a distributed generation section which could be uh, a pv solar panels or wind uh, generations or any other dg that you may install right now it's basically for this section to keep on powering a section of the grid even after it's been disconnected from the main grid now why is this dangerous because obviously for the linesman he think the line is dead but it's alive so which is why it is very dangerous because it's a potential shock hazard for him now this islanding can also cause equipment damages that may result because of uh, synchronization issues that will be as a result of your main grid falling away from the entire systems so basically to implement anti-islanding you then monitor for each section of your network on the bus bus you monitor the voltage for under voltage you monitor the angle deviations frequency drifts and all other related power system synchronizations element to ensure that you still have your main grid on and synchronization is ongoing once one of that fails you need to disconnect the section of the network to prevent islanding that means you implement anti-islanding protection system this is why in this short tutorial i'm going to show you how we're going to just simulate one of the basics uh, um, method uh, to implement anti-islanding on this load bus 2. so let's think uh, this dg bus here as our distributed generator now this is just a simple example it's just a synchronous machine with its bus feeding into this load bus here so what we're going to do here we're going to just implement a relay and a voltage transformer here to monitor the voltage at the bus there are two methods where you can implement anti-islanding so they, they, there is a passive method where we can actually monitor the abnormal voltage frequency and maybe the harmonics for that particular bus and there is also the, uh, the the active method which mean you need to monitor disturbances for your network okay now uh, that's a bit more advanced so I'm just going to demonstrate a simple one here where we're gonna just monitor an under voltage presence on this load bus too so if you want to see how to implement anti-islanding make sure you stick around until the end of this tutorial now without any further ado let's get started great stuff now to do this we are basically going to add a voltage transformer and a protective relay then we're going to configure the voltage and the relay to work together. And then we're going to configure an RMS simulation to basically create an outage event that will then trap the relay when it detects an under voltage and create an anti-islanding protection. So that's basically what we're going to do. Now let me go ahead and just stop here. And by the way, if you found this useful, please make sure you subscribe to Simtech channel and give this tutorial a thumbs up that will be highly appreciated now let's first uh, grab our relay and click on the point of connection because this point here is now what is known as the common point of control okay so we're going to click on that node and we need to add this relay on one of the cubicle here let's go ahead and just click right there okay it's added okay not yet one more time there we go so we've got the relay there and we can exit now let's go ahead and grab the voltage transformer there we go voltage transformer and we also now going to add it at the same common point of control 
PCC. Okay, so we're going to click right there. And we're going to click at this point here on this same cubicle. And we're going to connect it right here like that. Okay. Now we need to do some cleanup here in our connection. So let's go ahead and grab that VT. Drop him down there. Select it. And we're going to rotate it. So you need to select the entire element like that. And we're going to rotate it clockwise. Okay. And let's go ahead and just move him a bit like that. There we go. Now we've got our VT. Now let's try to run. See if things are still all right here. Okay. We've got an error. Obviously, we need to configure our relay here. So there is a missing type. Okay. No problem. We're going to sort that out. Now, since both our relays and CT are missing types, let's go ahead and start with the CT. Double click. And we're going to create a new type, select global type. Okay. Now over here, depending on the libraries that you've got, I'm going to go ahead and select the relays here and I'm going to click on VT. And I'm going to choose this voltage transformer and I'm going to say, okay. Okay. Now you can see the primary tapping, I've got 20,000 volt and the secondary tapping, I've got 100 volt. Now I'm just going to say OK. Now it is important to ensure that the bus bar in which you are also measuring have a potential that close to that rating. So my bus bar here is 25 kilovolt line to line. So that should be OK just for basic testing we're doing here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is to double click on the relay. Now as you can see here. My relay is actually empty. There are no configuration here. Okay. I only see the voltage transformer here, but there is nothing else to configure our relay. Let's go ahead and select the relay type. And if you want to create a new project, you can go ahead. Otherwise I'm going to do a global type. And over here, I'm going to choose from one of the library I've got installed here under chad and we're going to choose a relay library okay and over here we're just going to expand and we're going to select this particular relay and we select the one amp we say okay and boom we've got all the settings filled up with a bunch of relays for us now right now lots of them are enabled we need to put some of them that we're not going to use out of service. Let's first say OK here. Now we can see we've got the VT ratio and the relay model have been selected. Now it's always important to do a quick sanity check. Basically just running your load flow analysis to ensure that you haven't induced problems on your network. So let's do a quick run. Okay, we're still having a problem here. Let's see. Now there seems to be another relay missing a type. Now we may have added two relays while we were adding the relay on this PCC here. So let's check all the stuff we've got on this network. It's plenty because this network we've been running it. Uh, I've done lots of modification here. So some old labels and data are still here. Let's see if we can locate another relay and put him out of service. Okay, we've got two relays here. You see here, there is this one at this cubicle and there is that one. Now, it seems like we're using this one. It's got a type. So let's put this out of service. Okay, now we can exit. Yes, let's save the change. It's now out of service. So let's close that and let's try to run again. Okay. Now it's working. So that relay was causing problem for us. I think we double click it or something didn't work well there. Now we we good here. Now the next thing we're going to do is obviously to create um, a simulation, an RMS simulation. But before we do that, we need to uh, double check our relay setting to disable the relays that we do not need. To do that, let's go back into our relay model. 
and let's go down here now you're going to notice some relay here the, this model now these are different relays that are part of the relay model that we selected the, from the library now these relay some of them they measure voltage current frequency deviations under voltage over voltage that's why they are all sort of them now we're going to select just one for under voltage detection at this point here now you're gonna see some of them go tick mark means they are enabled some of them they do not have it that means they are out of service so we're going to disable a few of them here that we do not need like this one we're gonna put him out of service and also this one out of service now if you go in here you can see detecting some frequency time delay there let's put him out of service now 27 pp2 okay we're going to use this for under voltage detection so we're gonna leave him and we're gonna take this one out okay now by the way if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel that will be highly appreciated and also if you uh, have a university project a personal project work related you are more than welcome to join the channel membership and share your project detail we're going to discuss and work it out together the channel membership is quite affordable for everyone who want to join thank you very much for your support now we can say okay because we now know which relay we're going to choose here we say okay great stuff now if we just run this again we can see that we are still fine things are not broken now let's enable the rms simulation very important first the initial conditions here now you can see the type of event we've got a simulation event fault we're going to create a new one over here let's just create new and we change it to anti islanding okay then we just say okay great stuff we select it and over here we show the events there's uh, no event now we're going to create an outage event now there are plenty more here let's go with the outage event for now and we say okay and we're gonna give it 10 seconds now here we need to choose an element what we want to take out right so we want to take out the dg bus here the distributed generation we want to take it out so i'm going to go ahead and select and you can see dg synchronous machine there is a slack bus there are all sort of things here so i'm going to go ahead and select the dg here and okay it's been selected and then okay great stuff then i can close now we actually ready to run let's execute the initial conditions here to check what's going on now these are our initial condition now the bus voltage here is 1.05 per unit we want to detect when this voltage goes below that and we want to break trap this breaker to isolate this section great so which means to do that we need to add another simulation event basically a switch event now we've got an outage event that's set that basically take this out when uh, the relay detect an under voltage but what we're going to do after detecting an under voltage we want to run a switch event which will then trip this breaker so to execute that we're going to open our case study here and we're going to select uh, a simulation anti-islanding event now we've got outage event we already created now we're going to now create a new object and this time it's going to be a switch event okay and then we say okay now what we're going to switch or uh, basically break an element we're gonna open a circuit breaker and over here we're going to now since the breaker that we want to trap is on the load bus okay where we've installed our uh, voltage transformer and the relay let's go ahead and select the load bus here and we're going to trap one of these breaker now let's select cb2 
okay now we want to disconnect cb2 now we've add another event here known as switch event if we open our initial conditions you're going to see we've got a switch event which is now going to be uh, opening the cb2 breaker now let's go ahead and execute now we're going to now do a 20 second rma simulation run and execute and as you can see boom we triple the breaker as soon as the relay detected an under voltage for more than five seconds we went ahead and tripped the breaker you can see the nominal voltage here is very low so if we go into our relay we're going to see the pickup voltage is 0 0,3 if it persists for five seconds we basically trip the breaker now if you want to know more about all these settings right what's going on here and configure the frequencies uh, deviations and other elements you know what to do join the simtech channel or reach out and let's discuss your project so that is it guys if you find this tutorial useful and find value in it please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to simtech channel until next time cheers